Operation Suitcase, the initial Canadian plan to break through the German lines and capture Bergop Somme, had been derailed by the fast and effective use of crack German forces. After this setback, the Allies shuffled their forces and came up with a new battle plan. The Canadian 6th Brigade would be relieved by the 5th Brigade to provide fresh forces and punch through the German lines south of Bergop Somme. Meanwhile, the Canadian 4th Brigade would focus on Wauwse Plantage and break through to the north to cut the railway between Bergop Somme and Rosenau. The Canadian 10th Brigade would move to Huibergen and deliver the knockout blow by moving north through the sandy forest roads to Bergop Somme. In order to prevent a German attack in the flank of the Canadian armoured thrust, the British deployed two brigades to attack towards Nispe and exploit a breakthrough with the 34th Armoured Brigade all the way to Wau. The whole plan seemed to be designed to destroy the German 6th Parachute Regiment once and for all, along with its parent unit Battle Group Chill. The 6th Parachute Regiment was however in a bad shape. Most battalions had around 100 men by now. During the general retreat on October 24th, they had taken their main position at the narrowest point between the swamp on the coast and the forest area east of the road to Berbsom at Lindong. If we look closer at the obstacles of the Canadian 5th Brigade, it looks at first glance that they just had to overcome a minor height at Lindong, a speed bump as you will, and break through the lines of the much weaker German forces of the 1st Battalion, which probably had the strength of a weak company by now. That's why the paratroopers had taken up position on the Lindong Heights, which was the last obstacle to Bergop Somme. What is little well known is that the Germans not only had the advantage of this height and the proximity of the shelter in the brick ovens, but also the bonus of prepared trenches and a tank ditch. When the Calgary Highlanders attacked in the morning of October 25th, they became stuck and didn't manage to reach the German main line of defense. As a result, the Regiment de Maisonneuve was ordered forward to attack the Daverfeld brickworks. The German paratroopers were gradually pushed back under this overwhelming pressure. But the Canadians could not overcome the trenches and tank obstacles. The 5th Brigade attacked until nightfall, but all in vain. The failure of the Canadian 2nd Infantry Division to break through was hardly noticed because the eyes were on the Canadian 4th Armoured Division, quite literally, because Field Marshal Montgomery came to visit its AQ that day. His visit lasted only one hour, but his message was equally brief. Backup Somme had to be taken as soon as possible. The same day, the 10th Brigade began to advance in anticipation that the forested area between the Fallschirmjäger Regiment 6 and the other German forces of Brettelgruppe Schiel would be the weak point in the German line, where the Germans would not expect an attack due to the unfavorable terrain. The problem was that the area was heavily mined and the German outposts spotted the Canadian advance in this sector. The 6th Regiment had little troops left to spare, but threw in its depleted 3rd Battalion to avoid the collapse of the front line. Soon the Canadians suffered the same fate as their brothers of the 4th Armoured Brigade a day earlier, and tanks and trucks were burning hulks along the road. The German tank hunter squads were so aggressive that the Canadians had to partially retreat. Thankfully, Montgomery had already left when these reports came back to Division HQ. Meanwhile, the 4th Armoured Brigade had fared little better. The whole day it had been fighting the Hermann Göring Training Battalion in Wauwse Plantage, and heavy gear was brought in in the form of flamethrower tanks to expel the fanatical fighters of the Fat Marshal. After two days of heavy fighting, the village was taken but turned into a pile of rubble. The Hermann Göring Battalion was depleted and exhausted and as a result the 6th Fallschirmjäger Regiment had to commit its remaining frontline battalion under its command, the 1st Battalion of the 2nd Fallschirmjäger Regiment. 
Its commander, Oswald Finzel, had already been evacuated because he had lost a leg, and his remaining troops had the strength of a weak company. Nevertheless, it was put into the line at the crossroads north of the Potage, where it would be exposed to armored attacks from the south by the Canadians. Soon it would be threatened from the east by the British, but not until the next day. The British had more luck when they launched their attack. Their brigades sliced through the German lines like a hot knife through butter. The remnants of the German 346th Division had little fight in them left, after almost a week of intense fighting against a superior enemy. The British 34th Armour Brigade fanned out in the countryside despite harassment of the occasional German assault guns. Meanwhile, the Canadian 10th Brigade tried to outflank the 6th Regiment's 3rd Battalion by moving north on dirt roads and exploit the relative open terrain east of berg op -Som to move into the city. This would lead to nothing less than the destruction of the bulk of the 6th Fasching Regiment, if successful. The German outposts observed the Canadian move on time and once again the 3rd Battalion frustrated the advance of the 10th Brigade. A fierce counterattack from the German paratroopers dispelled all hopes to take Bergepsom on that day. Meanwhile, the Canadian 5th Brigade tried to storm the Lindonk Heights once again, but despite artillery and tank support, the 1st Battalion of the 6th held firm. That evening, the German paratrooper units were basically the pivots of the German front line between Rosenau and the seaside south of Bergepsom. The 1st Battalion held against the Canadian 5th Brigade at Lindonk, while the 3rd Battalion was fending off the 10th Brigade, and the remnants of Finzel's Battalion were covering at Wouse Hill against the Canadian 4th Brigade and the British 34th Brigade. But last but not least, Mager's 2nd Battalion retreated behind the anti-tank trench near Rosendaal to defend this important railway junction. This large arc spanned 15 kilometers and was defended against a numerical superior enemy, which enjoyed artillery and air domination. The 6th Weissemjäger Regiment was at its lowest strength, but paradoxically showed peak performance these days. Nevertheless, this situation was untenable, and after dark the permission to retreat arrived from nobody less than Field Marshal von Rundstedt, the Supreme Commander of the Western Front. The German forces were required to hold the line from Berg op Soop via Roosendaal to Breda. The next day, the Canadian 5th Brigade went to attack the German positions at Lindonk once again. Brigadier Megel was personally present to oversee operations, but the German paratroopers had already left, much to the surprise of the Canadians. The 3rd Battalion had also retreated behind the Zoom River, and the Canadian 10th Brigade would enter Bergerp's zone unopposed. It's very telling of the professionalism and discipline of the German paratroopers that they could vacate their positions without alarming the enemy. The retreat was, however, not flawless. Finzel's former outfit was caught by the armor of the 34th Brigade and practically overrun. More than 75 men surrendered, including the remnants of the battalion staff, which meant that the battalion ceased to exist by all means and purposes. Two German assault gun units between Rosena and berg op were the only reason that the Canadian and British armored brigades were kept at bay and failed to exploit the destruction of the German paratrooper battalion and move over the railway line into the open terrain. The German soldiers were at the end of their endurance and the paratroopers were also exhausted in terms of manpower and stamina. The units of the Canadian 2nd Infantry Division were exhausted as well, and they were used to mop up the German garrison troops in Zealand. Their position was taken by the Canadian 4th Armored Division. The pivotal question was whether the German paratroopers could hold off these troops long enough to avoid the same fate as Finzel's men and be overrun by tanks.